Good day to all. This is the first part of our discussions for accounting of consignment transactions. As defined, consignment is a contract or an arrangement. We can also say a marketing arrangement whereby its purpose is to increase sales. And in this particular arrangement or contract, there are two parties involved, the consigner and the consignee. The consigner is the owner of the goods while the consignee is the agent. We can also say that the consignor is the principal and then any acts made by the agent will bound or will bind the principal or consignor, of course, provided that the actions of the consignee or agent is within the authority given or provided in the contract coming from the former who happens to be the consignor. The consignee later on will get commission out of the sales of the goods and then will be deducting any reimbursable expenses, meaning to say expenses made by it, him or her, in behalf of the consignor related or relating to the consignment contract and remitting the proceeds thereof or therefore to the consignor. So this is the case wherein the consigner wants to minimize efforts of selling and therefore it will assign agents to do the sales. So normally this would be for goods because we are talking here about delivery of the goods from consigner to consignee. So we do not talk here about services. We cannot do consignment for services, which is another type of product. Then as we can notice, the net proceeds here are actually transferred from the consignee to the consignor. But then the goods are delivered, of course, from consignor to the consignee. So this is vice versa. And then you can also see here account sales report, wherein together with the net proceeds, as what I've said a while ago, the net proceeds is the amount that is net of any reimbursable expenses and commission coming from the consignment contract, which are deducted from sales. And then the report, which would show the details, how many units sold, the unit selling price, the total sales, the itemized items for all reimbursable expenses, that commissions will be deducted from that to get the net proceeds. So in this particular contract, we will also be using certain accounts. For the consignor, we'll make or we'll be making a consignment account. Goods sent on consignment account. So this is for the inventory that is sent. And then the consignee account. So consignee account is basically the amount or the amount that we will be getting from the consignee. So in other words, this is normally a receivable. The consignor account is a payable a liability from the agent, which shall be paid to the consignor. So normally, consigning account will be a receivable if ever, for example, the net proceed is, of course, positive, meaning to say there is still a remittance that should be made by the consignee to the consignor. The consignor, of course, still that is a payable if that's the case that the consignee will have a payable or liability for the net proceeds in the contract to the consignor. For goods sent on consignment account, so we have here the inventory on consignment and then the shipments to consignment or on consignment if periodic inventory system. But then if we are using the perpetual inventory system, which is normally the case, so we are just going to credit merchandise inventory. And the debit consignment account that is inventory on consignment. Okay, so this is the debit, this is the credit. Nature of a consignment, we have to take note that the owner of the goods consigned and delivered to the consignee is the consignor. The consignee is the agent and not the owner of the goods. If the owner of the goods does not have retail outlets, he can consign the goods to an agent, as being said a while ago. So this is to increase sales. Then the agent will be selling the goods in behalf of the consignor and will get the commission as explained. 
consignor is the owner of the goods, the principal, and then the consignee is the seller, the agent, then will be remitting any net proceeds or remittance to the consignor. So the net proceeds or remittance will be proceeds, less reimbursable expenses, and commission. And the report, again, is the account sales report. Then goods sent on consignment are the property of the consignor until the goods are sold. So we're talking here about the inventories again. Then to be more specific, these unsold goods after the consignment contract will be in the number of goods and the values that will be presented on the statement of financial position or balance sheet of the consignor. On the consignor's books, we have here the consignment account, which is the profit and loss account for the consignment. So we can see here that the consignment account is basically going to show the income and expenses. For the consignee account, so this would be, as what we've said a while ago, the receivable of the entity. If, for example, the debit here, the sales would be greater than all expenses and commission in the said consignment contract. Then goods sent on consignment account will be the account for the inventory. So transferring to trading account, we also call this the inventory on consignment. So transferring to trading account, that will be a debit to inventory consignment and credit to merchandise inventory. So there is a minus to merchandise inventory total of the goods available for sale of the company and setting up an inventory on consignment account. Then in terms of recording, this is how we are going to record the transactions. If goods are sent on consignment, so the debit would be inventory on consignment, credit merchandise inventory, or shipments on consignment sales, if again, periodic inventory system. If we credit merchandise inventory, that is clearly perpetual inventory system, which is what we are going to use if the problem is silent. Expenses incurred by the consignor, especially in relation to the consignment contract, so that will be an additional amount or consideration or value for the consignment. Therefore, debit inventory on consignment and credit cash in bank, if ever this is in cash, if on accrual, so we are going to credit liability or any liability account could be accounts payable or notes payable or whichever is applicable. Number three, expenses incurred by the consignee and the commission payable to the consignee. So in this case, we are going to set up our account. Since the reimbursable expenses and the commission are connected or related to the consignment. So that would increase inventory on consignment account. And the credit will be the consignee's account. Remember this one, the payable account that we are going to set up. This is a credit because remember, any expenses and commission will be deducted from the total sales made by the consignee. In other words, these are deductions from the total sales to get the net proceeds or remittance, which shall be given to the consignor. Then sales recorded on the account sales. So this would be a debit to the consignee's account, which is the receivable, would increase the said account, and then credit the consignment account. Okay. What about if normal loss? If you can recall in cost accounting, especially for spoilage, so the damaged goods, if ever that is within the normal range, meaning whatever things that we do to protect and to prevent the said inventories from any damages, still this would occur or happen. So that's why in other words, the normal loss is incidental to the processes that we do in consignment. Therefore, we do not make any entry for that. Number six is that what if we have an insurance claim? So in that case, if we insure the goods against the normal loss, we debit the cash and bank account and then we credit the consignment. So inventory on consignment account. Then what if abnormal loss? 
despite management prevention and detection strategies or mechanisms in order to minimize loss, normal loss even can happen. And the more that if such would exceed the normal loss, these are the abnormal losses, for example, coming from fire loss, burglary loss, and stolen in transit. So in that case, if there is, for example, a claim that would be bank or the insurance company and then the profit or loss account, then the total loss credit. So meaning we close the loss and then we debit our claim and then any difference would be the profit and loss that we are going to shoulder for number seven. Number eight, payment from the consignee by check or bill. So if check is to be in cash or can be in cash in the same day or within the same day, so that would be bank, cash in bank, and then accounts receivable will be here if that is still, for example, a bill, so a promise to pay. And then we are going to credit the consignee account because this will be a deduction from the receivable of the consignor. Number nine is cost of goods sent on consignment credited to trading account. So in this particular case, so this would like be a closing entry wherein we are going to debit the cost of consignment sales account and we are going to credit the appropriate cost, which is inventory on consignment. So that's how we are going to do normally. For number 10, this is a closing entry. If the profit on the consignment is to be transferred to the profit and loss account, so that would increase inventory on consignment and then we are going to credit income and expense summary. This is another T account that we are going to make for goods sent on consignment account. So that would be for number one. You can go back to number one a while ago. So this one, this would increase the inventory on consignment and decrease merchandise inventory in that case. For this one, consignment, you can notice that these items were discussed a while ago and they would actually increase or decrease the inventory on consignment account. So on the debit side, for the goods which are sent on consignment, that would increase. The consignor's expenses, that would also be a debit because these are expenses, normal balances and then as well as commission. Then profit on consignment will be the debit or on the debit side because this serves as a balancing figure between the sales, the income, and the expenses. Then any claims to losses coming from consignment will be credit, and then the loss will be the opposite, of course, for profit. For the consignee, so this is the receivable account sales will be debit and then all expenses reimbursable expenses made by the consignee as well as the commission for that and then the difference of course will be the remittance to be made by the consignee to the consignor so here is the example sales and then expenses and commission therefore the consignee will remit the difference of 13,800 with the account sales report. For bad debts of consignments, it's possible that there would be some estimated accounts that cannot be collected, especially for sales which are done in credit. A consignee or agent sells goods and collects money on behalf of the consignor. If he can't collect the debts, these debts should be treated as the bad debts of the consignor. It is because it is within the authority given by the consignor to the consignee. So the consignee is acting based on the authority given to him or her. Then accounting entries in the books of the consignor will be a debit to consignment and then credit to the consignee account. So this would be a deduction to the receivable of the company and the debit to inventory and consignment because this is an expense. So you can notice that here based on the T accounts.
if a consignee receives an additional commission for del credere, so on credit sale, and then we get the commission, he must bear all the losses from the bad debt. So this is an additional provision because there is an additional commission anyway. In case of a bad debt or bad debts arising from sales of goods on consignment, no entry is required in the books of the consignor. So in this particular case with additional commission. Then accounting entries in the books of the consignee will be debit to bad debts and then credit to the appropriate debtors. But then for us, if we're going to really follow IASS and IFRSS, so we just follow the entries wherein we debit the expense, bad debt's expense, for example, and allowance for bad debts, with the bad debts borne by the consignee personally. All right, so thank you very much for listening for part one. Hopefully you learned something from this session and watch out for the second part for our consignment sales transactions or accounting for consignment series. Thank you very much for listening once again and God bless us all.